fountain pens and how to pick your first one. Hi everyone, this is Tina with Overall Adventures. Thank you so much for joining me. I've put off talking about fountain pens for too long, mainly because I've been judging myself saying, I'm not enough of an expert to talk about this. But then I started realizing that I wanna to talk to beginners about fountain pens, and guess what? I'm a beginner too, so if you're a beginner, I'm a beginner, we're in the right place. Let's do this. Here are the pieces of the fountain pen that you need to know. So we've got the nib, the barrel, we've got the feed, We've got the grip section. We've got the converter um, or maybe a cartridge and we've got a cap. So the first step before that we go shopping, before that we pick out the pen, before we learn about fountain pens any longer, I want you to go and find your favorite pen and your journal. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take your favorite ballpoint pen or whatever kind of pen you like right now and we're gonna analyze why you love it and that's gonna help us decide on which fountain pen to choose and to purchase. So before we jump into that, let's analyze your favorite pen. So I'm gonna ask you some questions and I want you to write down the answers in your journal. I also have a printable in the description box, so if you don't catch it all in this video, that's totally fine. So one, let's start with the nib of your pen. How thick or broad or fine is your line? Are you writing with a 0.5, a 0.7, a 1.0? If you don't know it, look it up because that's going to be really important information later on to decide what size or what with nib you would like in your fountain pen. I'd also like you to take a look at the length of your pen. Is it like very long? Is it slender? Is it super chunky? Right? Is it, is it small and compact? Take note of that. You can even measure it if you want to get super fancy. I'd also like you to look at the grip section. This, my, this is my particular favorite junky pen that it's a zebra and it has this really cool it's almost like triangular it's not a perfect circle and i find that for me it helps uh grip the pen in a way that i like to grip it so look at your grip section what does that look like and try to describe that in your journal super important what is it made out of is it plastic is it metal is it aluminum what material is it made out of and bonus points if you can find the weight of the pen so whether that's online you google it or if you have a super sensitive scale. <laughs> I don't know. But what is the weight of this pen, your pen? This one is plastic. It is super light so I can write for long periods of time, which is why I love it. Let's look at the ink supply. So I can't take this off because this is, I can't take a look at it, but how long does this ink last me? This has actually lasted me a surprisingly long time, um, but it's obviously a disposable pen. It's not refillable. And that's part of the reason why I wanted a fountain pen in the first place was because I wanted an environmentally friendly alternative. So what's the ink supply like? Is it kind of more of a gel texture? Um, and how long does it last you? Which kind of leads me into the next question. How do you fill up the ink? So do you just throw the pen away? Do you have like a separate cartridge that you use? Do you use like a syringe? Like how, how involved are you with this favorite pen of yours that isn't a fountain pen? What kind of paper do you use with this? So just, you might want to look at your actual journal collection or the paper that you use and just take some notes on like the types of brands that are your favorites because that's going to come into play later. Not all of those brands might be fountain pen, pen friendly, which is a little sad, but take note of your favorite papers that you use with your favorite pen. Do you travel with it? Does this need to like throw in, do you need to throw it into different places? Which kind of leads me also to budgets. How much did your favorite pen cost? Um, was that worth it to you? Do you buy a lot more of these? Et cetera, et cetera. And the last question, which is probably the most important is what do you use this favorite pen for? And are you hoping that your new fountain pen will replace it? Or are you hoping for a different usage with your fountain pen? So now that we've finished analyzing your favorite non-fountain pen, it's time to think about what are we looking for in a new fountain pen, okay? So in your journal, I want you to kind of explore a couple prompts. Probably the most important question here is how will you use it? Are you looking to sketch? Are you looking for something that's just like fancy letters um, or hand lettering? Or are you looking for something that's like an everyday workhorse kind of pen? Are you looking for something just for a travel travel journal or a planner. It's really important to think about what you want out of the fountain pen because what you want might be completely different than what I need or want out of the fountain pen, which is going to take us into two completely different directions and make different choices when it comes time to purchase a pen. The third step is I want you to think about your budget. So how much do you want to spend on a pen? I had no idea when I went into this like world of how 
just how high priced fountain pens could be. Um, and for me, especially starting off, never even touching a, pen, a fountain pen in my life, I was pretty nervous to buy something online that I'd never touched, I'd never written with before. I had no idea what it would feel like in my hands. So I was definitely looking towards not that expensive fountain pens because what if I didn't like it, right? So based off of budget, there are a couple things that I want you to think about. Ink, how do you want to refill your pen? So there's two different options. There, well, there's a lot more, but for a beginner, I'm just gonna say there's two different options. Probably the simplest option is with a cartridge. So it kind of works just like you've seen them in ballpoint pens, like at Target or places like that, where you get this, you get a little cartridge, it pops onto the pen and you are good to go. When you are run out of the cartridge, you get a little couple more, pop them in and you're good. The second option is a converter where basically the piece the ink well here or where the ink is held is is stays the same no matter what kind of ink you decide to use and you just refill it each time you run out of ink so you end up with buying you'll end up buying bigger bottles you buy a bottle of ink or what i would recommend for beginners is trying out a couple sample sizes to see what kind of ink you like and to be honest this is where it gets a little complicated so my top recommendation would be to just start with a couple different sample sizes so you're not committed to buying like a huge thing of ink and what if you don't like it right so start small then you can play with color too which is always fun so the next step is research. So taking your answers to those first two journaling prompts, you should have kind of a, an idea now of what you're looking for in a pen. So hopefully that should guide you when you look at different brands and different types of pens that you could purchase. The next part is to research the shops that you're going to purchase from and their return policies. If you have not had a chance to work with these pens and you're just buying it blind offline and you've never written with a fountain pen before, it can be pretty intimidating. So you want to make sure that the return policy kind of supports supports you in that. And the last thing that you want to think about is nibs when you're doing your research, right? So go back to your list with your favorite non-fountain pen and see if you like fine, extra fine, bold nibs, and you want to make sure that the nib you're getting uh, matches the, the thickness, the broadness, or the fineness that you like when you're writing. So my last tip isn't always going to be able to happen, I'll admit for everyone, definitely didn't happen for me, but in an ideal world, it would be awesome if you could try out the pen before you purchase it. So if you have a awesome stationery shop near you uh, where they'll let you go and experiment with the pens, go for it. Or if you have a friend who has a couple fountain pens or maybe a friend, an online friend who's willing to send you a couple so you could try them out and then mail them back, that is ideal. Writing is a very obviously tactile experience and it's really important to think about how it feels in your hand. We could do all the research we want and still end up with a pen that's just not, not our favorite. And I've made this mistake plenty of times. Check out my Boston vlog where I tried, even I, I tried out the pen in the store and I was like, this is great. And I went home and I was like, nope, this is not for me. If you are completely stuck and you've done your research and you still don't know what you want to do, baseline, Baseline beginner pens, definitely I recommend Lamy, Kaweco, and I've heard great things about Twisby. I only own two fountain pens, but there's a whole world out there of lots of beginner friendly pens. There's a ton of other videos to check out. If you're really tight on a budget, um, Devin Liu, she made a video of $5 fountain pens and under, so I'll link that as well, which I think is super helpful. But I think Lamy, Kaweco, Wisby, those are some really good brands to start with if you're just completely lost. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that was a helpful guide into helping you choose your first fountain pen. Thanks.